This is Irk with Get Irked, and today we're going to look at Coinbase. If you have been in the stock market or the cryptocurrency industry at all, then you've probably known that Coinbase, the company that allows users to exchange cryptocurrency, came public in April. So the question you probably want answered is, is Coinbase a good stock investment for the long term? No. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share this channel with others. Okay, all right, I'm just kidding. Realistically though, let's take a look at Coinbase and figure out what its problems are and why it may or may not be a good long-term investment. First off, what you see here is the monthly view of Coinbase, which really isn't necessary since at the filming of this video, Coinbase has only been on for two weeks. So we can go to the weekly view and it doesn't look much better. Coinbase came public at a price of $381. The reference price for the stock was $250. You've got initial public offerings or IPOs, and you've got direct listings. In an initial public offering, the company offers a certain amount of stock for sale to the public. That stock is offered at a specific price. So investors and hedge funds who are lucky actually get to buy the stock at the IPO price. With a direct listing, no one is able to buy the stock in advance. Only the holders, the private investors, and the people who worked at Coinbase had shares of the stock. So when they said that the reference price was $250, nobody got to buy that stock at $250. When it came public, it came public at $381. That's the starting price. You could say the reference price was a dollar and that this is the most successful stock the world has ever seen in the history of man. It doesn't matter. The reference price may as well have been made up. So the stock opens at $381 and then starts to go down pretty rapidly. Let's take a look. The stock opened at $381 here. It popped to a high of $428.93. This is the five minute chart. So that means within the first 10 minutes, it hit its high, its all time high of almost $429. And then very quickly started its precarious collapse with almost no support on the first day until it got down to $310. That means from the high to the low, Coinbase collapsed a total of 27.73%. But that's just the first day. Let's switch to the daily charts. Again, we're looking at the first day. Here it is. On the second day, Coinbase briefly found support slightly above its low of $310 at $317.27. And it bounced up to $349.20. And it closed, just so that we make sure, at $322.75 the second day. The next day, it made a little bit of a bounce and it ended up closing at $342 before collapsing every day after until this past Friday the 23rd with a new all-time low of $282.07. So maybe you're looking at it and you're thinking, wow, $381 down to $282.07, I'm getting a discount of nearly 26% off of what it came public as. Well, that's true, except how much further down could it go? So for this, I'm going to use Fibonacci retracement. Fibonacci retracement is not necessarily an exact science when it comes to these things, but it can give you a general idea of where you can expect a stock to end up. Also remembering that the reference price is $250. So we'll start with the bounce from the first day. So we'll draw from the bottom of the bounce to the top of the bounce, and that gives us some interesting figures. As you can see, on this day here, which would be Wednesday the 21st, it actually found support slightly above the 127.2% Fibonacci retracement line. And then on the following day, the Thursday, it almost stopped to the penny at 285.77. In fact, it stopped at 287.20. But now that it's broken 161.8% as a Fibonacci retracement line, how much further could it go? Let's take a look. First off, in order to do this in TradingView, you have to turn off the auto scale. Otherwise, it won't allow you to move to places that haven't already been visited by the asset you're looking at. Then you just move to this axis here where you can see that the icon changes to two arrows and you can shrink the scale so it gives you even more numbers and figures. So let's shrink it all the way down. Intriguingly, 
The 261.8% retracement from that first day bounce is slightly below the reference price of $250 at $246.57. After that, you can see another potential support at $207.37 and yet another one at $183.15. To make matters even worse, if we turn the auto scale back on and we do the bounce off of Friday from the low to the high on Friday, we get even more downside figures so let's look and see what we've got now you can see that around the reference price there is quite a bit of support which makes it an interesting point yes I think we're going to see the reference price in fact I think it's unquestionable we'll see the reference price Bitcoin was trading at all-time highs when Coinbase came public, which means Coinbase's valuation was probably at an all-time high as well. So as Bitcoin sells off and the rest of the cryptocurrency industry sells off, I think we'll see Coinbase do the same. Coinbase could be an interesting investment in an IRA or for somebody who doesn't want to hold the actual cryptocurrency. However, there is another element that was overlooked by a lot of the pundits, including CNBC, on the first day. They kept saying that Coinbase is the only shop in town and there are no other exchanges. Now, of course, there are international exchanges, but that's not what I'm talking about. There's another private cryptocurrency exchange called Gemini, which offers low lower fees and lower transaction costs than Coinbase. And as they get more and more public and more and more attention, there's going to be a competition to the lowest price for transactions and commissions. In fact, it's ironic that Coinbase started charging for commissions slightly after all the stockbrokers went free to charge on commissions. But at any rate, Arguing that Coinbase is the only place in town isn't right. There are other competitors and we don't have to go international to get them. So what happens when Gemini comes public? You're trading an exchange. You're not trading the cryptocurrency itself. It's like owning Schwab or owning E-Trade or owning Ameritrade back when they all were individually trading and thinking that that meant you owned the entire stock market. It doesn't. You just own the business that trades around it. For a new investor, that just came out and is so highly overvalued, I would recommend extreme caution if you have any interest in owning the space. Full disclosure, I bought on day one. I had a $414.50 entry price, and I have been very slowly adding to the position to get it further down. It's not even a full allocation in my investments in Play portfolio. It actually shares the speculative basket with six other stocks. That's how cautious I'm being with this particular trade. I just am very wary of it in the long term, even though the company is already profitable. Buy Coinbase. Don't buy Coinbase. As always, I'm not a professional advisor. You should probably consult with one, but you really need to figure out if this is the best way for you to get exposure to the cryptocurrency space. Kramer always says if you want exposure to the electric vehicle space, you should buy Tesla. My argument here is if you want exposure to Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. I wouldn't even recommend using Coinbase as the broker. I would recommend trying Gemini. I have links to both below, and we both get a little bit of a bonus if you sign up and trade $100 worth of USD within the first month. But Gemini has literally almost half the fees as Coinbase Pro. Yeah.